<laughs> Just kidding. Well, hey man, this is Marvin. Uh, you know, um, how long have you been down here now for Marvin? I've been down here since last December. Last December, and you know, as soon as Marvin got here, you know, uh, he actually reached out to me online, and I had a chance to see his testimony. Uh, he shared a real powerful testimony on his uh, YouTube channel about how he got delivered from cigarettes, and he fasted, he fasted for like seven days, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, he, he knew he needed to be delivered, and uh, I just love that 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 pure uh, that pure testimony of, of when people get real and they make they, they make vows to God and they they fight to get free from sin. <laughs> And then Marvin ended up moving down here, and uh, you know we got connected, started street preaching. But I wanted to just give Marvin a chance to share a little bit about his testimony and talk about how the Lord uh, brought him here and how He saved you too. So, Marvin, tell us a little bit about what happened to you. So, in um, 1982, I was born and raised Jewish. In 1982, I became born again along with my mom and dad and my two brothers. Um, and I really, truly became born again because I knew the difference between right and wrong for the first time at the age of 10 years old. I knew. When I said a cuss word, I was wrong, and I needed to repent. Um, but uh, from 1982 all the way to two years ago, um, I've been taught so many uh, false doctrines uh, from charismatic churches and stuff like that. Uh, not that it's all their fault, because you know I should have been searching the scriptures for myself to show myself approved, and I wasn't doing that. Mm. And then I was leading my family down the same path that I was going down which was the wrong path, which is the, the lukewarm, at best. Mm -hmm. I, I can honestly say two years ago, I was lukewarm at best mm -hmm. until I, God started doing the refining process in my life because I was allowing him to. I was allowing God to do the refining process in my life and I started coming to holiness. And then as I was, uh, we were living in Wisconsin and we moved to North Carolina for about a year and a half and we, made, we basically just became secluded from everybody, which is good and it's bad. Hmm. God used it for the good. He used it as a time to really sift us and really move through our hearts and work at the things out of our lives that we're that we've brought along with us for so long. And then um, I started coming to holiness and just realizing I needed to get holy and I needed to be holy and I needed to go and sin no more, Hallelujah. just like we preach. And now, and as I was driving up the mountain one day to work. I just felt that I, I kept on feeling this tug on my heart and this tug was on my heart and I'm like, Lord, what is this? I've been doing everything right. And it turned out I was supposed to be out preaching. <laughs> There's people's souls, they're, they're on their way to hell. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. So anyways, um, I... How do you know you're supposed to be on street preaching? How about when you wake up in the middle of the night and you start crying out for the souls that are on their way to hell? And um, we reached a lot of people yesterday at the, the homosexual event and thank God for Brother Gordon and his daughter coming down here too, or coming up here too. And thank God for my wife and my, and my son who just became born again. Mm. And, but let me, let me tell you about a man, um, his name is John McGloom real quick as part of the testimony here because um, he he came from his home in Kentucky to help us move down here to Florida because he knew we were supposed to be in fellowship with Jimmy Miller and get down here and start laboring with, with him and laboring with you guys and uh, he helped us move down and uh, let me tell you something about Mr. McLone Every place we went, every place we stopped along the way, whether it was a gas station or the place that fixed his tire that blew out, there wasn't one time he did not witness to somebody. Mm. And I learned something for the first time in my life from this man, through the, him being an instrument of righteousness. I don't give glory to John McLone, I give glory to God. Praise God. But his, 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 him being an instrument of righteousness like that, and, and just showing an example like that, whether he was doing it to show me the example or he was just doing it because that's what he does, convicted me so badly. So now every time I go anywhere, there isn't at least one person I don't hand a gospel track to. There isn't at least, there's got to be at least one person I talk to and I tell them about the Lord. And so um, just just uh, getting out with these men, men of God, like, like John McClone and, and Brother Adam here, and Israel and, and Team Jesus Preachers and, and Sister Raina 
and seeing what they do and seeing why they do it. And, and it wasn't until one day I, I, I woke up and I realized I needed to be out here doing this. <laughs> and I, I reached out to Brother McLone in, a, in a, a private message and I said to him, I finally realize why you do this. <laughs> I finally realize why you do this. Yeah. Because what it looks like hate to the world is love. Yes. Uh, truth is a hate speech in this country now. They, they think we're hating people when we actually love them. And that's how twisted this world has become. And that's how twisted I was. Hmm. They're thinking, you know, I would have never walked up to them and said they were doing it wrong, but I was certainly thinking it. Oh. I was certainly thinking they were doing it wrong. And so here I am, right out here with them doing it as well. And my son, who just became born again in uh, mid-December, once again, because John McLone and his son Daniel were instruments of righteousness. They were instrumental in my son coming to the Lord. Mm. And the very next day, I baptized him. And he has had his hand to the plow, mm. and he is not looking back. Mm. Praise <laughs> the Lord. So I just wanted <laughs> oh, to share that. Man. Well, praise God. Praise God. You know, it's funny. I think about the scripture where it says, you know, uh, some plant and some water, but God gives the increase. It says that he who plants and he who waters is nothing. Amen. But it also says that he who plants and he who waters will receive their reward. You know, so that's why we, we, we acknowledge people like John McGlone. And, you know, John's been instrumental in even, um, you know, he's the one who gave us all the case law to help us when we go to these events to, uh, to open up doors, to be able to, um, you know, uh, be able to have rights uh, displayed. Because, you know, we, you know, that whole thing that we battle with as Christians on the streets. So... Um, you know, praise God. I just wanted to give a chance to share some testimony here. Um, I'm so blessed, again, to be with Marvin, his family, his son Josh. Vicky was out there yesterday. And just to see a family that serves God, the whole family, you know, everybody. They're a unit. They, they're committed. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a rare thing. And we need to encourage one another not to lose hope for our families. Uh, that's something I know that um, and I'm not going to necessarily... Spark, spark, uh, spark another part of the testimony, but I know Marvin's told me that uh, God worked a miracle in his family. That it seemed like everything was going to fall apart, you know. But God healed that, right, Marvin? Amen. I'll tell you Go something. Ahead. I'll tell you something, fathers out there and husbands. If you want your house to get right with God, you better get on your knees. Mm. You better cry out to God today, and He'll save your family. But it starts with the men. Mm -hmm. I'm pointing at you, men. Mm -hmm. It starts with you. And that's what I found out. As I changed, God changed my wife. God changed my son. Because it started with me. As a leader in my household. And men, you'll give an account for your household on the day of judgment. You'll give an account get right with God first and then you can get your 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 everything else will, will line right up you take one step he'll take the next 10 I've seen it mm. I'm living it praise the Lord and um, I, my marriage at one point in time and uh, I, I'll, I'll do I'll do a video eventually about this my marriage was torn apart and I was in divorce we, we got divorced in 2000 my wife and I and God restored my marriage two years later it's a rare thing and so I know I have a rare thing like a rare jewel and I'm gonna take really good care of it mm. I'm gonna take really good care of it because that's what God's called me to do and that's what God's calling you to do too don't let your family fall apart don't don't do what I did don't hand your family over to the devil on a silver platter mm. and that's what most men are doing today with their families it's time to wake up. It's time to awake to righteousness and sin not. First Corinthians fifteen thirty four. Well, the scary, th the scary thing is, is that not everybody gets the second chance. Not everybody gets that healing. Uh, I've, no, I've seen firsthand people uh, get divorced, and then the one person gets serious about God and they want to reconcile, and it doesn't happen. So. Maybe somebody is divorced and there, there's, there's hope in this message, but you also need to fear God and understand that you may not get that extra opportunity if your marriage is heading to that way. So you need to see both sides. There's mercy, there's grace, there's restoration, there's miracle working power with God, but you need to do everything you can not to let it get any worse than it already is in your life. Yeah. You, know, you need to understand um, you know, what God is speaking to you through, through the Word of God. Um, so Amen. praise the Lord. Love you, brother.
Happy to go.